Hey guys, Chris here. Tonight I have a story about a man who has a property in British Columbia, Canada. His daughter joins him and one night in the winter they go out into the backyard and they have this frightening experience and they have a really hard time getting back into the house. That's next. Okay, we got a beautiful fall night here, September. Color's already changing up here. I'm up near Carson Pass. Carson Pass is right that way, heading west. And uh, we also have a moon this way, so. It is starting to cool off too, so I am definitely uh, gonna feel it tonight, so. It's a great time of year though, I love this time of year. Really fun seeing the colors coming in and on the, on the aspen trees. That's one of my favorite things in the fall, so. Everyone loves fall colors, how can you go wrong? All right, tonight we have Hop Knot IPA, and that is by the Four Peaks Brewing Company, and that is what I am drinking tonight. It says it's Citrusy, balanced, and naughty. I don't know what naughty means. <laughs> it's spelled naughty, like a tree, not like, like you think it is. <laughs> oh, little elevation change will do that to your beer, for sure. That's why I'm out in the wilderness, so I can, uh, there we go. All right, that will be, it's balanced, so I don't know what that really means, but. <laughs> I'm going to be more balanced after I drink it, I guess. That is good. A little frothy at the top there, so we got to pack it in there. So, All right. So tonight's story takes place in South Central British Columbia in a small community called Silver Creek. And Silver Creek is east of Vancouver and about halfway between Silver Creek and Vancouver is a provincial park, which is like the United States version of a national park. And it's called Sasquatch Provincial Park. Isn't that interesting? So in 2003, a man named Stephen was living on the outskirts of this community called Silver Creek, kind of up near base of this mountain in the pine trees. Had some property, less than an acre, but it was a, felt pretty remote and he really enjoyed it. He used to work in Toronto and he retired early and he always wanted to have a remote property a little bit of land in a really interesting area. And so British Columbia, really pretty, uh, it's like Montana on steroids. And I used to live in Montana. And his daughter wanted to come and live with him. 
and she decided to spend the school year with Stephen. And her name was Katie. She was nine years old. And during the summer, she would spend her time with her mom down in Seattle. It's also there. And he was really happy that she chose to kind of live up there, at least during that particular year. Because he thought she was kind of becoming a city girl and maybe didn't want to come out. And turns out she really liked it out there. She, she came up. And then that fall, interesting, she told him two occasions that she had where she saw something while playing in the backyard. The first time she saw a couple of dark shapes in the forest, the ridge line behind their property. And the second time she was with a friend and they heard off in the woods in the same general direction, this howl before it got dark one evening. And she kind of tried to describe it. And Stephen didn't really take her seriously because he thought, well, she probably saw maybe a black bear with a cub or something in the forest and maybe she heard coyotes because he'd been living there a couple years and he'd never had any issues he felt safe there and he uh, just really felt comfortable there so he didn't think much of that it was uh, one afternoon in late winter they got fresh snowfall and Katie liked to ice skate and there was a pond a small pond about a hundred feet back behind their porch off the back of the house and in this pond when it froze there were some trees along the edges and it was kind of cool because they're having these pine trees around it and you could skate around the pine trees and they always enjoyed that and they Stephen and Katie really bonded over their times ice skating and just being in nature and so this particular time she had a friend over and she came up with the idea said, hey, let's ask my dad if he wants to go skating and we'll play some hockey out in the ice. It'll be kind of fun. And so they went and asked Stephen, her dad, and she said, hey, we want to go skating. You want to come with us? We'd love it if you came. And he said, yeah, that'd be great. Let's, let's do it. So he got the hockey sticks and they actually put their skates on in the on the back deck and they started hiking out through the snow and there was like I said some fresh snow it was maybe about a foot foot and a half of snow on the ground and Katie and her friend were about 20 feet ahead of Stephen he was carrying the hockey equipment and walking behind them and they were really excited and Katie said hey dad Look what we found. We found some tracks. This is what I was trying to tell you. I, there's something out here. Isn't this cool? And he right away thought, well, it's going to be a bear track or another animal. And when he approached them, he walked up to them. They were both looking down at the ground and he clearly saw an elongated footprint about 17 inches long and about six, seven inches wide at the widest point. And he was in shock. He was like, this is strange, <laughs> okay? And he noticed from the trees over here, the tree line, tracks that came out from the forest and did kind of a horseshoe and then worked their way right back into the woods a little farther down. And he could see that these tracks were five to six feet apart. It's a long ways. To, if you were to walk like that, that's a long ways. To, you'd have to almost jump. At least I would. And he also noticed that the tracks were in a single line. They weren't like this. They were like this. But five to six feet apart. Really unsettling to see this. He always felt safe on his property. And he thought, okay... <laughs> Looked around, didn't see anything, didn't hear anything. He did notice it was really quiet. In winter, because of the snow, snow absorbs sound. And he noticed it was particularly quiet that night. No animals. It was late afternoon, evening, and the sun goes down earlier. So it just always feels the sun is so low that time of year. 
And he thought, okay, well, we'll come back to this. We get a few pictures and let's go skating and let me think about this and see what else we find. So they trudged through the snow, went about a hundred and so feet out into the backyard here and then got into the trees and they got to the pond and the ice looked really good. There was a little bit of snow on There was a fresh dusting and then there was some previous snow. And he found a couple of trees about five feet wide, roughly like the width of a, a net, a hockey net. And he was going to be a goalie. And so he got the sticks out and they started skating around and they had a puck and they were passing the puck back and forth, having fun, taking a few shots at dad and he was blocking it. And about five minutes later, Katie's friend was about 10 feet in front of Stephen, who was playing the goaltender. And she stopped and she was looking, it looked like she was looking right at Stephen, but she was looking past him. And she abruptly started crying. Just nervously frightened. And she was looking right through Stephen and then Stephen turned and looked and he saw what he thought was a face on the side of a tree that they had just passed a few minutes earlier and it retracted like that. And his first thought was, is there somebody trespassing on my property and they're spying on us? He was starting to feel angry and a little frightened at the same time. And he, he wanted to shout something that kind of scared whatever this thing was, if it was a person. And yet at the same time, he didn't want to scare the kids and make a scene. And then he thought about it. And he could see where this possible face looked around the side of the street. And it was seven or so feet high. And he thought, if that's a person, that's going to be the tallest person in the world. And so then he thought, maybe I saw this wrong. Maybe, maybe it was a squirrel. And it just went around the corner of the tree and around the backside of the tree. And I just saw this shape and then it just diverted back. And then he thought, no, there's something not right here. There's something not right. He was having this feeling of fear and this responsibility to protect the girls at this point. Something wasn't right. So he said, hey girls, let's, let's uh, head back. But the problem was they had to go by this tree that they had just passed minutes earlier where this, whatever this thing was, was hiding behind. He was looking for an alternate route. He was scanning the trees and then he saw another tree and another face peer around the tree and this time it went really slow and then it just stayed there staring at them. You could clearly see a face in the shoulders and the face was not human or ape. It was really just a bizarre sensation to see something that looked human-like and ape-like and yet it was neither. And he said, okay kids, let's just keep going. Come on, we gotta, let's go. And he's moving them, the kids around and suddenly Katie's friend started screaming hysterically and he turned and he could hear what sounded like bark being ripped off a tree and these abnormally large arms hugging the back of this tree and this huge creature effortlessly scaling right up this tree trunk into the, near the top of it. He could see the branches bouncing like this as it went up through the canopy and disappeared. And as he's looking up, he brings his head back down and now he sees three more of them standing in the trees. So now there's like five of them. And it was the weirdest feeling to have these things staring at them and there wasn't a single sound, no vocalization, it was silent. And that just gave him the creeps that these things are just staring and not making a sound at this point. He could see that Katie's friend had tears in her eyes and he was just determined. We're gonna go around this, we're gonna get through there, we're gonna get these kids back in the house. And then Katie said, hey dad, what are they? And he said, ah, 
Okay, I, I don't know, Katie. I, some kind of an ape, that North American ape that lives in the forest that we really don't know much about. But I'm sure they're gentle and they're probably herbivores. And she said, I heard that they eat deer. And he was just trying to stay calm and he just didn't want to have this conversation. And he'd always had this fear of the unknown, of being in the forest at night, <laughs> like I am, or being lost in the woods, or just just the unknown. He always had this fear of, of the unknown. And this was the most bone chilling experience he's ever had in his entire life. They finally got around these trees and they got a clear shot straight for the back deck of the house. And they're just, it just felt like it took forever because the snow is a foot and a half deep. The kids are nine years old and it just felt like eternity getting there. And they were about 20 feet away from the back door. And from the tops of the tree, he heard what later he would find out was a thing that these creatures do is called samurai chatter. The weirdest sound you could think of, but to hear it from the tops of this tree echoing through his own backyard was just the most bizarre thing he could imagine in his life. He finally gets to the back door of the house, opens a slider, the kids go in, he gets in himself and he's pulling the slider shut and he can still hear this chatter going until he shuts the door. Really creepy. Wow. They were all relieved to be back in the house. They were all really still frightened. He said, let's go in the next room and he built a fire for them. Went to the microwave, got some hot chocolate going, took care of them with that. And while they were talking, between themselves, he went to the back door and he opened the curtain and he looked out and it was getting dark, but it was it's winter. So when it's winter, the snow and the trees is high contrast. So anything that was out there, he could see. He didn't see anything. He didn't hear anything else. And he was up most of the night, just kind of keeping an alert on anything he could hear. He occasionally look out the window and he really wanted to make sure the kids were okay. They got through the night, they were fine. Did not hear anything else, nothing else that night. Months later, he found some more tracks. It was spring and they were in the mud and he actually got pictures of them. But never heard anything else like that, never saw anything like that, at least to this date. And he always wondered, how do these things, how could they live in the forest and go undetected? Are they really intelligent? Are they really super fast? How can they go and not, nobody really ever get great pictures of them and yet people People experience them and see them on occasion. And at some point later that year, he was flying over Canada in an airplane and he was looking down at the landscape and he could see all the trees, all the forest, just as far as the eye could see and then the mountains off in the distance. And he thought, yeah, yeah, maybe something could live out there. There's, there's, there's room for them. And, <laughs> and he thought, you know, think, think of the ocean. There, we're still discovering things in the ocean and how vast the ocean is and how deep it is. And he thought, yeah, who's to say what is really out there? And that is my story for tonight. <laughs> and it got really dark on me. And I got a, almost a full moon right this way staring at me. And I got a good sized meadow in front of me. Pine trees around the edge of this meadow. It's really quiet. I got a highway, maybe a half mile, mile that way. And I'm at 
off of a dirt road. My car's down that way. It's really quiet. No wind. Zero wind tonight. I feel very comfortable right now. <laughs> lighting helps. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> if I don't have lighting, uh, it's, a, it's a game changer. Uh, the, the nighttime without good lighting is a huge game changer. Now, of course, I have the moonlight, so that is a source of lighting. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah. And stars are starting to come out, so it's, a, it's an interesting night. I, I love it. And I know things are going to change drastically over the next month, month and a half, two months, as far as winter and snow and things like that coming. So, yeah, anyways, just my thoughts. Being out here, you just you feel alive. You just feel kind of uh, alert and alive. And your senses are hearing things, smelling things, seeing things. And, uh, yeah, just, I don't know, just an observation <laughs> about... <laughs> I could easily be doing this at home with a green screen, okay? Isn't that what, that's what most people do that are telling stories. They're in with a green screen. They're in their kitchen. <laughs> I like it out here, okay? I just, <laughs> I prefer to be out in the woods. It may be to my detriment, but uh, that's, <laughs> I'm comfortable or at least comfortable enough. So enough said. Hey, if you guys like, stories about strange, unexplained, and things that go bump in the night, you guys know what to do, right? Click the like, subscribe, do some nice comments, and that's fine, that's great, I appreciate that. And um, yeah, we will see you on the next one. I am gonna keep going, I got some more stories lined up, more locations, and uh, more, the, the second half of fall here coming up. And then winter is going to be interesting. <laughs> Got to tell you. All right. Thanks, thanks, you guys. We'll see you next time. Keep hiking.